Pastor Bradley, truly from my heart, um, I was part of bringing you into this church family as a pastor here at Lyons Hill. And from what I can see and the experience I've had with you through my family and all, you've been a dedicated, well-served pastor. One of the best pastors in this United States to me and my family. All that you do, all that you're doing, your family, everything that you do here and outside of here, it's not only in this building that I see your works. And I know God knows your works. And he sees all that you do. Thank you for your service and dedication here at Lyons Hill, especially to me and my family. God bless you and may you have many more anniversaries here. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Good morning and welcome once again to the worship services for Lounge Hill Baptist Church. We want to thank uh, Deacon Ricky Young for those kind words. And we pray that uh, we as uh, pastor and deacons will continue to work together and the fellowship of this church will continue to grow. Uh, we want to thank you for tuning in with us, uh, supporting this church in your pr with your prayers. Uh, thank you for viewing us on uh, Facebook, YouTube, and on our church website. We pray that God will continue to bless and strengthen each and every one of us. Now for the announcements for today. We thank God for how great he is. Uh, we have the church announcements uh, for Sunday, December the 6th, 2020. Tomorrow, December the 7th, 2020, is the deadline for Medicare and health plan open enrollment. If you still need to make any changes or updates of your coverage and you need some help or advice, you can still call Sister Gwen Wright at 864-979-3410. We continue to give thanks to you, our members, for your support through your tithes and offerings, as we also continue to thank our finance committee, trustees, and deacons as they are available at the church each Sunday between 11 a.m and 1 p.m. to receive your gifts. As you know, we uh, make our uh, CDs available uh, for our children's church and morning message. Uh, they are available each Sunday between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. They are only available upon request. Please contact Brother Sam Bigby. And as we make our service available on CDs, we are now uh, ready to start to make them available on DVDs. If you don't do Facebook or YouTube, but you have a DV DVD player or a computer, you can request a, a DVD of the service. Please contact Brother Sam Bigby. They will be made only upon request. Please continue to be in prayer for our sick and shut-in members and friends. Let us also continue to pray for the bereaved families in the church and all across the land and country. And we will speak more to those in a few moments as we prepare as we go to prayer, go for prayer for our sick and shut-in. This is the first Sunday of December and always on the first Sunday of December, we take time to recognize individuals with birthdays uh, they, that will be celebrated in the month. Uh, so we want to take just a moment to congratulate all the members of the church who will be celebrating a birthday in the month of December. We pray God's blessings upon you. We pray that you will have a magnificent 
uplifting and spiritual and enjoyable birthday. We know that this is a trying time now with the coronavirus and we may not be able to have celebrations and parties like we once did or family gatherings to help celebrate. Uh, but however you're able to celebrate your birthday, we want to congratulate you and pray that God will bless you in a mighty, mighty way. At this time now, we are going to uh, go, we're going to prepare for our children's church. And as you would take note, we're doing the, uh, things a little different this morning. Uh, everything is going to be done from here, uh, from the pulpit. Uh, so we want to thank God for one more opportunity that he has given us uh, to be able to come together and give glory and honor and praise to God. So at this time now, we're going to ask uh, children to come close. Parents, if you will, if they're not already in the room, if you have some grandchildren, children, uh, bring them to the uh, to your viewing station and um, so that they can share with us in our children's church. So good morning, children, and welcome once again to our children's church time. We thank God for you and we pray that you will continue to be uplifted and encouraged uh, through uh, this media uh, and being able to view our children's church, even though uh, we're not in the building at the present time. Our lesson for today is coming from Mark's gospel, Mark's gospel, chapter one, verses one through eight. Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, the New King James Version. The Word of God says, The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Then all the land of Judah and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached saying, there comes one after me who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loosen. I indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Today's lesson is entitled, John Tales About Jesus. This is the first of December and we are approaching the celebration of the birth of Jesus. And so uh, in Mark's gospel here, uh, it begins with, uh, he begins his gospel by talking about the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God. He starts by quoting from the Old Testament in the book of Isaiah, the prophet. He says, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way a voice of one crying in the wilderness, 
calling out in the desert, saying, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. When we look at this, we see in verses four and six that he says this, this messenger was John the Baptist. And he says, John came baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the land of Judea, Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River. They didn't have baptismal pools like we have now in, in the churches. Uh, they went to the river uh, to be baptized. And I'm sure if you would even talk to some of your uh, uh, grandparents, you'll find that some of them may have even been, had to go down to a lake uh, to be baptized uh, before they put pools in the building. Uh, sometimes some churches had some pools or uh, built outside in the churchyard. Uh, but even before that, uh, many times they would find a little lake or stream near the church. And that's where they took the people to be baptized. So John was baptizing the people in the Jordan River. And they came confessing their sins. Uh, he says, and then he talks about the clothing that John wore. How John wore clothing made of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. And he, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And you may wonder, why would he stick that in there? You know, he's talking about John being a, a messenger, uh, uh, crying out in the wilderness about the coming of the Savior. Why would he put that in there concerning uh, his, his dress? I, I think it may have been uh, uh, to show us uh, the humbleness of John, uh, that he was not no uh, uh, big person to try to uh, wear a whole lot of wealth, uh, to try to make himself look big and important. He was humble. Uh, he didn't wear any fancy uh, robes and stuff. The, the scripture says he just had clothing made of camel's hair uh, with a leather belt uh, around his waist. Uh, and for his food, he had locusts and wild honey. So he was a humble and meek individual uh, that was ready to be used by the Lord. And we see in verses seven and eight where it says that, that John came preaching about the Lord. And he was saying, he was saying, now, after me will come one more powerful than I. Uh, he says, now, I'm coming now, uh, but after I come, there will be another one that will come that's more powerful than I am. He says, matter of fact, the, the straps of, of his sandals, I am not even worthy to stoop down and untie. Uh, he, and he tells the people, he says, I come, I'm going to baptize you with water. Uh, but he, the, talking about the Lord, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is teaching us that we too must be messengers of the Lord. We are to go and to tell others about the coming uh, and the how Jesus came into this world. We got to tell people how he was born of a virgin, uh, how he was, how he walked this earth, uh, made blind men see, deaf men hear, uh, dumb men speak, uh, how he went to Calvary for us and how he gave his life for us. And not only that, we got to tell people that, that he's coming back again. He's coming back again. Uh, we got to let people know that, that, uh, they must be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And that can only come from the Lord. Uh, so uh, I have been blessed. Uh, many of you, the young children and uh, uh, my time here at Lowndes Hill, we've, we've been blessed to baptize many of you. Uh, but I need to let you know, <clears throat> you see, uh, when we give our life uh, to Christ, uh, here and join the church, uh, 
I can only baptize you with water, but Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And when he baptizes you with the Holy Spirit, it makes you his messenger. You become his messenger that you must uh, now go and tell the world, uh, warn the people about the coming of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, he has come into this world once, but he's coming back again. He's coming back again to, to claim his church, his church without spot or wrinkle. And so we still have a job to do. Somebody may say, well, John has already gone before and told the people about the coming of the Lord. Yes, he has gone. He's told the world. We've still been telling about how he came, but the message is still he's coming back. We got to tell the world to get ready because he's coming back. And the thing is, we don't know the day nor the hour that he's going to come. But so that's why we got to be ready. And it's our responsibility as children of God. It's our responsibility as messengers of Jesus Christ to tell the world that he's coming back again and they must get ready. So young children, even at your young age, you can be a messenger. Share with your classmates. Share with your friends as you play. I know we may not be playing like we used to out in the yard and uh, with a whole lot of people. We may just be playing, playing with family members. Uh, but when opportunity comes and God leads you, God presses upon your heart to tell others about the goodness of Jesus and to let them know that he's coming back again to take us home to be with God the Father, then that's that's what God wants us to be about, being a messenger uh, for him. So don't just accept Christ and hold it in and keep it for yourself. Let others know how good God is to you. Amen. Now, let us uh, prepare to go to God in prayer as we pray for our young children and pray that God will use them as messengers of Jesus Christ. Gracious Father, our Lord and our God, we come to you now. We thank you for how great you are. We thank you, dear Father, for uh, blessing us to be able to share with these young children this, this moment, this day. We pray, Lord, that you would just bless them and strengthen them. Keep them in your care. Father God, we, we thank you for your word today, reminding us of how uh, John was appointed as a messenger uh, to go before the world and let the people know that Jesus was coming. And now, Lord, here we are. We are still being messengers of yours to go before the world to let the people know that you're coming back again. So we thank you, Father. Bless these young children. Use them, Father, that they will be able to go and share uh, your word throughout this land, wherever they may go, wherever you lead them, let them be true messengers. Not only them, Lord, but bless their parents and bless their homes. Bless their school time, dear Father, that they will uh, be obedient and do the work that needs to be done. And we pray, dear Father, your blessings upon them as we continue to go through this coronavirus. And we are forever give you the glory. So we thank you and we praise you for, for us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And thank you for the time with the children. And we're going to uh, get ready now. We want to, first of all, um, ask for continued prayer with our, for our sick and shut-in members. We give God the glory how he's blessing us, how he's keeping us day by day. We ask that you will please be in prayer. We learned earlier this week uh, that Brother Marcus Harrison uh, recently had uh, some knee surgery, uh, but I'm glad to report he's uh, doing better. He's up and about. Matter of fact, that's uh, how I learned of it. I saw him and I uh, was talking with him, I saw him, and I thought he had hurt his foot, and he shared with me that he had had knee surgery. And we 
I want to con continue to pray for him and that his recovery will continue to be, uh, be a great one. Also, uh, please be in prayer for Deacon Fred Stevens. I'm sure some of you, all of you may have already uh, received word. We wanna, uh, Deacon Fred Stevens had surgery this past Thursday, uh, had some back surgery and he's doing well. Surgery went well. Uh, he's resting and recovering. Of course, he's still in the hospital. Hopefully he will, uh, hope he'll be out by today. Uh, but if not, God is still in the plan. And uh, so we, he just simply asks for your prayers. Uh, we know that uh, during this time of coronavirus, uh, can't be going to the hospital to visit like we once did, uh, but we can pray. Uh, we can pray. So please keep him in your prayers. And also, uh, Sister Mary, uh, continue to pray God's blessings upon her. Uh, she is... Uh, they're dealing with it and taking care of him. We know that God is able to do anything but fail. Also, we're asking special prayer for Minister Karen Brockman and family. Uh, Minister Brockman had an uncle to pass this, uh, this week. He was funeralized on Thursday morning. And uh, so we are asking that you will please keep uh, that family in your prayers. Uh, Minister Brockman and I were, uh, were talking uh, the other day and uh, she shared with me that uh, they have had uh, nine deaths in her family this year. Uh, and so God is moving through that family and so we need to pray mightily. We need to pray mightily for them and all individuals that have lost loved ones. Uh, sometimes we may know them and sometimes we don't. Uh, but we we ought to be able to pray one for another, regardless of whether we know them or not. So we want to keep all of these individuals in our prayers, along with uh, all of our members, those that are in nursing home, rest homes, and wherever they may be. We pray that God will bless in a mighty, mighty way. Would you bow with us now as we go to God in prayer? And uh, as we pray for our sick and shut in members. Gracious Father, our Lord and our God, we come to you now in the humblest manner we know how. We come, dear Father, first of all, acknowledging that you are God, and beside thee there is none other. Father, we come praying that you will. Look down upon those that are sick and shut in in this church and all across the land and country. We pray, Lord, that you will wrap your arms of love around them and let them know that you are God and beside thee there is none other. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy and how you are moving in our lives and keeping us day by day. We ask, Lord, that you will touch every individual member that's on our sick and shut-in list. Touch them one by one and name by name. Lord, you know who all there. You know what's going on in their lives. You know what they stand in need of. So, Lord, we just pray that you will uh, bless right now. Father, we pray for those that names that we've called out today, Brother Marcus, uh, touch his body, continue to heal him, continue to give him the strength that he needs to, to be up and about and doing the work that you have assigned him to do. And Lord, we know that you have a, you have a, a great work for him, a mighty work. Uh, Lord, sometimes we can, we know that there's a work to be done and, and sometimes we can shy away from it. So Lord, we just pray right now that, that you would touch him and show him the work that you desire for him to do. We thank you, Father. We thank you for that young man. And we pray your blessings upon him. Lord, we pray for Deacon Stevens. As he's gone through his surgery, you, you walked right with him all the way. As he was going through, you guided the doctors. You were with the nurses. Lord, we thank you for what you have already done. And dear Father, even while he was in the surgery, 
and you were there with him. You sat with Sister Mary in the waiting room. And we thank you, Father, for wrapping your arms of love around her and comforting her heart and her mind while she sat there patiently waiting to hear word concerning her husband. Lord, we thank you. You are a mighty God. You are a great God, and we're so appreciative of all that you do in our lives. Now, Lord, it is our prayer that you will heal his body and lift him up, that he will be back in the midst and in the fellowship with us all, and we'll be able to give glory and honor unto your mighty name. We thank you, Father. We praise you for everything that you're doing, and we pray, dear Father, that you would just continue to bless this church. Lord, continue to be with Minister Karen Brockman and family at the loss of another loved one. We thank you for bringing comfort to them and guiding them through the services. And Lord, we pray that you will uh, speak to that family as you're doing now, Father. Touch the hearts of the, those family members and let them know that you are, you are God that you are aware of everything that they're going through. And so, Father, wipe the tears from their eyes and let them know that if they just hold on to your unchanging hand, everything is going to be all right. So now, Lord, we thank you and we praise you as we continue to lift you up. Bless this church. Bless every individual, every member, every family. Everyone is connected to this church in whatever way you see, Lord, whether it's a friend, neighbor, Lord, whatever it might be. We pray your blessings upon them, that there's a healing across the land, and we'll be able to lift you up and give you the glory. So we thank you now, and we praise you for everything. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. At this time now, we're going to get ready for our worship, for our sermon, our message. And so if you have your copy of the Word of God, would you turn with us to 1 Timothy chapter 6? 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. And again, I'm reading from the New King James Version. There you shall find these words so recorded. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which draw men in destruction and prediction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness, pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O man of God, Flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. I want to talk for a few moments this morning from the subject, getting back to the basics getting back to the basics. I don't know about you, but we've taken notice how uh, prior to this uh, coronavirus, we would see how uh, many of our churches are sort of, uh, to put it in a polite way, sort of getting on out there. 
and I, you know, we we need to, we're getting away from the basic structure of what God has put in place for us. Uh, you know, we now we want to do it our way. Uh, we think that our way is better uh, because we have uh, gone to a few meetings. We have attended a few classes. We we have gone to school or done this and done that. And uh, we, we think that our way is better. And so we want to we feel that we if we add this or do this, uh, we're going to draw people. We're going to get this and get this crowd. Uh, but my brothers, and nothing wrong with doing things different. Uh, but I've learned that even in doing things different, uh, you've got to stay with the basics. you got to stay with the basics in our, in our daily living and even in the church. In the church, that you got to stay with the basics uh, because the, uh, the basics is the foundation of the church. Amen. It's the foundation of the church. It's the foundation of our life and how we must carry ourselves and conduct ourselves. Uh, so when we're talking about uh, getting back to the basics, um, you see, we got to understand uh, the importance, the importance of prayer. Uh, many of us don't have a prayer life anymore. We just up and going. We just jump up, go, do, 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 just gone. We don't have a prayer life anymore. Uh, the importance of, of loving one another. Uh, we, I'm talking about just basics, the basics of, of the word of God, the basics of serving God, uh, the, 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 the importance of, of caring for souls. You know, we, we are more, we're more concerned about adding numbers on the church road than we are about adding souls to Christ. Amen. Amen. I, I hope you all know there's a difference. There's a difference in adding numbers on the church road uh, to adding souls to the household of faith. Amen. Because many people, many people can join a church, but they may not unite with, with God. Uh, so we got to, and, and it's sad that we don't have that caring uh, for souls anymore. Uh, desire to reach out to people, to share the lost work, to share the word with the lost uh, uh, but we got to get back to the basis. Uh, we got to look at the importance of, of living each day in the light of uh, his coming. Jesus is coming back again. We share it with the children this morning. Jesus is coming back again. And we need to be living like he's coming today. Amen. We ought to be living like he's coming today. Uh, you know, but we we take the attitude that we're going to be around here for years and years. Uh, and we just don't know that. Uh, when we look now, this, this coronavirus and the number of lives that have already uh, been taken because of it, uh, I, I guarantee you that many of those individuals uh, did not expect to be gone from this world. Uh, they took they may have had the attitude that they were going to uh, live on. And, and believe me, it's not just old, young, old and in between. Uh, they some of the younger ones thought that they were going to uh, grow up and have children and grandchildren and, and be an old, old grandperson, grandfather, grandmother to see their grands running around and great grands. But but through this, now they're gone. So my brothers and sisters, we need to live our daily life like Jesus is coming back today. Amen. Amen. And, and, and we don't see that as the basics of the church. Uh, and, and Paul is trying to uh, uh, show us that we need to make sure that we go get back to the basis, the basis of, of understanding and, and, and serving God. And, and, and making sure that we're lifting him up. And, uh, and, and we, we talk about uh, the things of this world and having success in this world. You see, success in the eyes of the world is, is having a lot of money, owning land, and, and having a lot of a materialistic stuff. But when it comes to true success, true, true success is getting back to the basics in Jesus Christ. Amen. So we got to make sure that we are getting back to the basics. Uh, and, and that's what God is trying to 
uh, make us understand. That's what we want to share with you today. And I thought about I thought about uh, have you ever uh, taken notice uh, uh, when they are getting ready to build a house? Uh, I don't know if you've ever taken notice when they're getting ready to build a house. Uh, I, 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 I have. I've taken notice that most times when they uh, find a patch of land that they're going to put a house on, uh, once they get everything, uh, uh, get the survey and everything done, they'll come out, they'll clear the land. And the first things that they would do, uh, they, will, they will put up, uh, they will measure it off, and they will put up four corners and they'll run stream from one corner to the other to lay out uh, the. And, and that is going to be the foundation, whether it's going to be a slab or whether they're going to dig down to put in a footing. Uh, but the, the boundary is where those corners lie, uh, the string and the corners that, that, that mark off. This is how far out you're going to have to go. This is how far uh, in that you need to be. Uh, all of that's done. And, and they mark it off. They have a little corner there, a little corner here. They're all of four corners with string running from corner to corner to mark off where the foundation of that house is going to be. And so I thought about that, my brothers and sisters. So when we're talking about for, for when we're talking about the getting back to the basics, I wanted to talk about uh, uh, getting back to the four corners, getting back to the four corners, the true foundation of our lives and the church. And so let's let's go to the first corner. <clears throat> the first corner, as we look here in in first Timothy, chapter six and verse six. It says, now godliness. So the first corner is godliness. Uh, you see, we must have uh, a godliness about us. Amen. Uh, some of us, you know, we just try to do anything and everything, but we need to have some godliness about us. But I need to tell you now, uh, it must begin with response to the gospel. Uh, you've got to respond to the gospel uh, to have godliness. Uh, you just can't come in and, and some people think that they can just come in and out of the church and and, and sit there and, and enjoy the service, enjoy the message, uh, and then just go home and do whatever they want to do uh, and they think they're okay. Uh, but to, to have a godly life, uh, you got to have a relationship with God. So you got to you got to respond to the gospel. And how do you respond? By accepting Jesus into your heart. See, I need to tell you, uh, you cannot uh, achieve godliness uh, apart from accepting Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, no man cometh unto the father, but by me. Uh, so if we're going to have a godliness in our life, we're going to have to have uh, the word of God in us. You see, and I need to tell you, you cannot read your way to godliness. Amen. I don't care how many times you read the Bible uh, and, and some people, they read it through. They can quote it from Genesis to Revelation, but they don't do what the word says. Uh, so we can read the Bible, uh, uh, but it, we got to have a relationship with God. Uh, you cannot read your way to godliness. You cannot meditate your way to godliness. Uh, you cannot uh, work your way to godliness just because you're in the church and you're singing, you're uh, working in the missionary, you're ushering or whatever. Uh, those are good things. Uh, those, those are uh, those, all, those, all those are important. Uh, but just doing those won't give you godliness. Amen. You've got to have a relationship uh, with God. Uh, you cannot worship your way uh, to godliness. Amen. Some people think if they come into church and if they praise God, they wave their hand, say amen, uh, uh, they're they going to have godliness. No, you got to have a relationship with God. I, I know y'all going to get tired of me saying that, but I got to drill it home. You got to have a relationship with God. You, you, you cannot give your way uh, uh, to godliness uh, just because you give big money in the church. 
You cannot give your way. Uh, people think if they make big donations and uh, they buy this and pay this, that uh, oh, God going to look down upon them with favor. Uh, you cannot buy your way uh, into God's kingdom. But now you do need to understand that all these may be uh, part of becoming godly after salvation. Amen. Yeah, I hope you count that now. It, 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 they are very important. They are part of becoming godly after salvation. Once you accept Christ, once you have that relationship with God, once you ask him to come into your heart and now he has saved you. Now these things will come into uh, uh, come into effect and play a part. Now you'll have a time of, of reading the word of God to strengthen you, to build you up. Now there'll be times of meditating, just allowing the word to, to soak in and, and, and be absorbed into your mind and your heart. Then uh, there, now there will come a time to go to work and do what God has called you to do. Now there will come a time of worshiping and praising God because now you have a relationship with him. You know what it means to say amen. You see, you can worship uh, uh, freely because you understand uh, what you're worshiping God about. You, you, you have a relationship and you give accordingly. You give accordingly. Uh, because you have a relationship with God. You see, all of those things are important and, and it comes from having a, a godly relationship. Uh, you see, the Bible, the Bible is a route to godliness. Prayer is a route to God. All of these are avenues of getting to godliness. Worship is a route to godliness. Devotional life, a route to godliness that cannot be a shortcut. We got to get back to the basics. The basis is the word of God. We got to have the Bible. We got to pray. We got to worship. We got to have a devotional life if we're going to have a relationship with God. We cannot say we have a relationship with God, but yet then we do nothing until we from one Sunday to the next. The only time we even talk about God or speak of it it's when we get ready to either go to church or tune in with worship service on YouTube or uh, 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 Facebook, something to that effect. But you see, if you if you have a relationship with God, if you have godliness about you, then you will be able to uh, 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 take these elements, these basic elements in our life and not only in the church life, but in our daily walk. In our homes, we'll be able to put them into effect. There will be a, a prayer time in the home. We'll have more love in the home. Uh, there'll be more caring for the souls of our family members, our neighbors. Uh, there'll be a time that we can understand that Jesus is coming back. He's coming back one day, and it might be today, so we got to be ready. So the first corner that we are going that we have gone to is the corner of godliness. I'm talking about getting back to the basics of the church in our Christian walk. Getting back to the basics. The first corner is godliness. Then the second corner, as we move down the stream to the second corner, <clears throat> the second corner is contentment. Again, in verse six there, first Timothy chapter six, verse six, it says, now godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness and contentment. What a combination. Godliness and contentment. Uh, the contradiction of those who claim one without the other. Yeah, you see, you can't have one without the other. No one can can walk close to God while complaining. Amen. You find somebody that's complaining all the time, every word out their mouth is negative, always looking at the bad part, the bad side of something. Uh, you, you be a little hesitant about, on, about their relationship with God. Because you see, when we have a, re, a, a godly relationship with God, then it will make us content to understand that God is in control. We may not be able to understand it. We may not be able to reason it out, but we ought to be content and know that God knows everything and he's in control. So no one, no, no one can walk close, can walk close to God while complaining. No one can, can know true contentment 
apart from a walk with God. If you really want to be content, have a walk with God. Amen. You, you can't you can't know true contentment uh, without having uh, a true relationship uh, with Jesus Christ. Yes, my brothers and sisters, one, they go together. Uh, godliness and contentment. When, when you have that godliness about you, then you'll be content in Christ Jesus. Yes, uh, you may not have what the next man have, but you will be content in, in what God has blessed you with. You will be content in understanding that, that, that the God we serve <clears throat> is a mighty God. And the only thing he wants you to do is continue to walk with him. Contentment comes from focusing on what we have. Contentment comes from focusing on what we have. Uh, look, look in Isaiah chapter 26 and verse three, it says you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Amen. We, we, we got to uh, keep our mind and our focus on God. Uh, we, we, we got to trust him. Uh, we, we may not be able to uh, go places that we would like to go, but we got to trust God. We may not be able to do things that we would like to do, but we got to trust God. We got to be content with what God has given us. We got to be sometime even in, in, in uh, uh, physical limitations. Uh, some of us have physical limitations. Uh, where uh, we may not have the use of certain limbs or, or, or we don't have the strength that others have. Uh, but whatever God has blessed us with, then we need to be content with it to use it to the glory of God, to use it to the glory of God. That's what he says, that we got to understand that whatever we have, God desires to, to, to magnify it. Uh, that it can be used for his glory. You see, discontentment comes from focusing on what we do not have. Uh, when we're discontent, uh, mean that we're, we're more concerned about things that we don't have uh, than things that we do have. Uh, so we want to be content and understand that, yes, uh, God has. Now, I, I, that's not saying I'm not saying uh, that we are not to strive to improve ourselves. But what I am saying is that. As God blesses us, then let us take what he blesses us with, be content with it and use it to God's glory. And I guarantee you that if we be content with what God gives us and we use it to his glory, then he'll take that and he'll elevate us. And we'll find ourselves getting more and more than we ever expected we would we would get. So the first corner, the first corner was godliness. The second corner is contentment. The third corner of this foundation is understanding. The third, third corner of this foundation is understanding. Look at verses 9 and 10. Verses 9 and 10 says, But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many, into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men into destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Yes, my brothers and sisters, the danger of being rich. Amen. I know everybody, everybody has, whether you want to admit it or not, everybody has had a dream of being rich. Everyone has thought about, man, what I could do if I had, if I won the lottery, if I had a million dollars, if, it, you know, uh, I, every last one of us have had those dreams. Even, even the preacher, all of us have had those dreams. Uh, that's the human nature, that's the human side of us. But once we have a relationship with God and we understand the godliness that God desires to be in our lives and the contentment that he has placed us in. Then he shows us the danger of, uh, 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 of being rich. Uh, even though this is the goal of many people, it is a danger. Uh, you see, there's, there's sorrow uh, 
uh, that comes with uh, being rich. Uh, we, we worry about uh, keeping uh, our money. Uh, we, you know, I, I've noticed that uh, when people always want to argue and grumble about money, uh, it, it's because uh, sometimes it's because they, 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 are, they cheat people and they think everybody else cheating people. Uh, but but we we are we're more concerned. We always think somebody's out to to, to uh, cheat us, to do us wrong, to take advantage of us, and so we worry ourselves about that. We worry ourselves because we got a little money, and we and we refuse to help people because we are afraid that they're going to take advantage of us. That's sad. That's sad, especially being a church a body of Christ, when God blesses us to, uh, to be able to have something, to be able to do something to help somebody. But we won't do it because we think that they're going to take advantage of us. They, they, they're using us. And, and they might be. Believe me, I know there are some people that will use the church. But you know what? I, I, I'm a believer that God will show you. If you have a relationship with God, if you have some godliness about you, and you are content in, 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 in Christ Jesus, he'll give you the understanding that you need to uh, see uh, when somebody is trying to uh, use you. And so we got to, he'll give you that discernment. And so we have uh, to understand that we got to uh, uh, not worry about being used. Uh, the, the danger of having riches, because uh, we, you know, we worry about being used, uh, holding on to the money that we got, uh, danger to, to loved ones and, and all of that stuff. Uh, and we, we worry about uh, what God is trying to, uh, uh, how people are trying to take advantage of us. And we need to stay focused on who Jesus is in our life. Uh, so when we understand, God gives us an understanding. He gives us an understanding uh, of of knowing that all we need to do is trust and believe in him. Now, I know over over the years, people have talked about how money is the root of all evil. That scripture does not say that. The scripture does not say that money is the root of all evil. It says the love of money. Amen. Because God has uh, so orchestrated that money was placed on this earth, that we could take it and use it for his glory. So money is not the root of all evil. It's the love of it. <clears throat> the love of money, that's the root of all evil. There are people who want m money more than anything else. And because of that, it leads people to do wrong. That's why people are robbing banks. That's why muggings are taking place, because people want money. They want to steal. They want to take from the rich. They want to, they want to take from anybody. You don't have to be rich because they just have a, a greed for it. And so they, they break the law. And, and, and so it's not the money itself. It is the, 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 the uh, greed of it, the love of it uh, that's uh, wrong because it will uh, cause you to fall into temptation. And so we got to be mindful and have an understanding that God is trying to show us that we are to serve him each and every day of our lives. So my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> when we talking about getting back to the basics and building on that sure foundation, we got to understand that, that uh, as we build that foundation, as we lay out the groundwork for the foundation, I don't know whether your building is going to have a, a, a footing or a slab, but you got to understand uh, that you got to start with laying out the corners of your foundation. You ought to start with godliness, start with contentment, start with understanding. And then the final corner, corner number four is goals. What kind of goals are you setting in your life? What kind of goals do you have? Look at verse 11, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. <clears throat> the word of God says, but you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Yes, my brothers and sisters, 
We got to have a goal in our life. We are striving to reach a goal each and every day of our life. Yes, we're moving up the king's highway. Righteousness, when they're talking about righteousness, we say, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Uh, godliness, uh, here it is again. Uh, is godliness is being near to the heart of God. Uh, faith, uh, the school of faith, um, and the power of faith. Um, we got to have faith in God uh, that he will take care of us. Uh, love uh, thy neighbor as yourself. Uh, love uh, how we need it. Uh, the great need of the church uh, is love. Uh, we got to learn to love one another. Uh, it's sad that we can come in and out of the church uh, and we don't have love for one another. Uh, not only must we have love for one another, uh, but we must have patience with one another. Uh, patience uh, with one another, uh, but most of all, patience uh, is waiting for God to work uh, out his will. Uh, wait on God, uh, my brothers and my sisters. Uh, don't try to do it yourself, but wait on God uh, and he will uh, show you the way. Uh, meekness, uh, humility, uh, gentleness, uh, Moses, uh, a man God could use. Uh, at last, uh, we know uh, what God can do. Uh, God is able. <laughs> If we just humble ourselves uh, and show him uh, that we're willing uh, to walk with him, uh, to trust him, uh, and let him lead the way, uh, we're able uh, to stop doing uh, the things of this world. Uh, we can walk uh, with the Lord uh, and tell others uh, that God is able. Uh, I'm so glad. Uh, I've just come by to tell you uh, that you need to walk with the Lord. Uh, he's able uh, to build your foundation. Uh, he's able uh, to, to put you back uh, at the basic foundation. Uh, get some godliness in your life. Uh, be content uh, with the word of God. Uh, have an understanding of what God is trying to do. Uh, set some goals in your life. Uh, your goal ought to be righteousness, uh, not just to acquire things. Uh, your goal ought to be godliness. Uh, your goal ought to be faith. Uh, your goal ought to be love. Uh, your goal ought to be patience. Uh, your love goal uh, ought to be weakness uh, and humility. Uh, I'm so glad uh, that God is able to do anything but fail. Uh, I come by to tell you uh, that we need to trust uh, in the Lord. Uh, he's able uh, to do anything but fail. Uh, but let me tell you uh, one more thing before I take my seat. Uh, I need to tell you uh, that if we're going to build uh, our house, uh, we got to start uh, with the true foundation. Uh, Ephesians. Yeah, Ephesians 2 and 19 uh, and 20 uh, said, Now therefore uh, you are no longer strangers uh, and foreigners, uh, but fellow citizens uh, with the saints uh, and members uh, of the household of God. Uh, having uh, been built on the foundation uh, of the apostles uh, and prophets. Uh, look what it says uh, at the close of the verse 20. Uh, Jesus Christ uh, himself uh, being the chief cornerstone. Uh, don't you remember uh, when they tried to build the house uh, and they threw this old ragged rock uh, out of the way? Uh, they didn't like it. Uh, but when they finished, uh, there was one stone uh, that they needed to feel uh, to put in the house uh, and they had to go back uh, to the stone uh, that was rejected uh, I come by to tell you church uh, that Jesus uh, he is that stone uh, if your house uh, is not built right uh, you better find the right stone uh, put Jesus uh, in your house uh, he's able uh, he's able uh, I know what he'll do He'll take care of you uh, every 
every step of the way uh, the hymn writer said uh, the church is one foundation uh, in Jesus Christ her Lord uh, she is uh, his new creation uh, by water uh, in the word uh, from heaven uh, he came uh, and sought her uh, to be his holy bride uh, with uh, his own blood uh, he bought her and for her life he died Jesus died for the church he gave his life oh, up on God Gothel's hill he bled and died for the church he died there the word said he hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour he died until the sun refused to shine he died and when the moon dripped in blood he died until the centurion said surely surely he is the son of god but i come by to tell you it didn't stop there they took him down they buried him in a borrowed tomb he walked through the halls of hell he took the sting of death and the keys of the grave he told old man satan he got everything in the palm of his hand he stayed there all night friday he stayed there all day saturday he stayed there all night saturday night but early, 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 sunday morning he got up with all power in his hand get back to the basics love the lord have a relationship be content have an understanding set goals in your life give god the glory he's able he's able he's able to do anything but fail but it's going to take us to get back to the basics and put in Jesus in our life. Get him now before it's everlasting too late. Jesus is coming back one day. We don't know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall appear. So we must be ready. We must get back to the basics right now. And it starts with having a godly relationship with him. Build on that foundation. Jesus Christ is the foundation of the church. And so we got to make sure that we're building on the sure foundation. God will take care of us and he will see us through. My brothers and sisters, get back to the basics. Look at your life. Look at how you're living. We're complaining, worrying about, we don't have this, we don't have that. And God is just steady blessing us. God is just steady blessing us. Be content. Be content. I know there are others may be able to do a whole lot better job than I, but I'm content with what God has blessed me with. I should not be jealous of other preachers, other churches. No. Take what God has blessed me with and use it to his glory. And that's what we have strived to do in our years here at Lowndes Hill. Taking what God blessed us with. We had some ups. We had some downs. Some times of struggle. But we had some good days. We had some joyful times. We had some good fellowships. So it's not all bad. It's not all negative. And that's what God will do. He'll take what we have. And he'll bless it then he will get the glory out of it. So I challenge you today. I challenge you today to get back to the basics. 
Not only in the church, but in your life. Not only in the church, but in your life. Put him in your life. Get him on the inside because that's where it starts. You see, you can't have the church will not be structured right. If the homes are not structured right. Because it's families, homes that make up the church. And all that mess and trouble that you have in at home, you bring it in the church. So how do we expect the church to be right? When we lying and cursing and drinking and all that stuff at the house. And then we're going to come to church and expect us to walk a tightrope. My brothers and sisters, we need to take a good look at our life. Take a good look at our life. Every last one of us, myself included, so we can get back to the basics. Get back to prayer time. Get back to loving one another. Get back to caring for souls. Get back to living each day as if Jesus was coming back right now. And when we set up the foundation, the foundation of godliness, contentment, understanding, and goals. I know there are some others that you may put on your foundation, but this is what God gave me. You may use some others to bring out different points of building on the sure foundation of Jesus Christ. But whatever it is, make sure that you have that relationship. And so we're going to pray. We're going to pray that you will have the right relationship with Jesus to build on your foundation. Let us pray. Gracious Father, our Lord and our God, we come to you now in the humblest manner we know how. We come, dear Father, thanking you for another day's journey. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be able to come and share with you today. And we pray, Lord, that you will bless us now, strengthen us and keep us in your care. We thank you, Father, for this word today, bringing us back to the basics, the basics of our life, our family life, our home life, and most of all, our church life. Lord, we pray that we'll have a greater relationship with you and we can be content with how you're blessing us. Have an understanding of your word and what you're trying to do in our lives. And we'll set the goals of righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. We thank you. Thank you, Father. Bless every member of this church, wherever they may be. Bless their relationship with you. Guide them that they are standing on the sure foundation of Jesus Christ. And dear Father, there may be somebody that's listening to these services that, that do not know you, that have not accepted you. We pray, dear Father, that you would touch their minds and their hearts that their eyes will be open, that they will come to have a relationship with you. Lord, let them now confess their sins to you. Open up their hearts to you. And you will take them in. We pray mightily for them. And we thank you for everything that you're doing. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. And for his sake. Amen. This time now, my brother, sister, we're going to get ready for our communion service. As we prepare now to go and share with you, our brothers and sisters, for our communion today, we do want to remind you, if you did not get by the church and pick up a cup to use for today, if you would just Secure you a little cup of water, orange juice, apple juice, uh, whatever.
wafer, cracker, cookie, whatever you have available to utilize for this. We will pray God's blessing over it, that it will be used for his sacrament. First, let me share this word of God. The scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. The word of God says, For I received from the Lord that which also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilt of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. Let us pray. Gracious Father, our Lord and our God, we come to you now as in this sacred moment in time, preparing to receive this bread, which represents your broken body, this wine that represents your shed blood. And Father, we pray a special anointing upon the members of this congregation as they're in their homes, and the elements that they're using. They may not have this cup, but Lord, they may have a cup of juice or water, or cracker, or cookie, whatever it is, Lord, we pray your anointing upon it. We pray that you are blessed as they use it for this purpose to bring glory and honor unto your mighty name. So we thank you, Father, for how you are blessing us this day. Continue to strengthen us and guide us that we serve you forevermore. This is our prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Jesus and the disciples assembled themselves together in the upper room. After Jesus shared with them the understanding of him departing from this world and giving them instructions on what they were to do and to help carry things on. Then he took the bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and said, take and eat. Then likewise, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he said, take and drink. He says, often you eat of this bread and drink of this cup. You do so to show my death till I come. So my brothers and sisters, we give God the glory and we thank him for all that he does for us. Continue to bless his holy name and serve him forever and ever. Let us look to God to be dismissed. Gracious Father, we thank you. We praise you for everything that you have done in this place. We thank you for the opportunity to come into so many homes across this land. Lord, we continue to pray your blessings upon each member, upon this nation. Lord, continue to strengthen us as we go through this coronavirus. Lord, it is our prayer that you will uh, continue to move, that things will be, uh, that we'll be back in our churches. And even though we have an understanding that things aren't going to be like they used to be, but Lord, we still can come together to praise your name. So we thank you, Father. Bless us now and keep us. But for this to take place, we must get back to the basics of serving you, loving you, and allowing you 
to rule our life. So we thank you and we glorify you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Now may the grace, the sweet communion of our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ, may he rest, rule, and abide with us all, both now and forever. Let us all say amen, amen, and amen. Yeah.